So I'm trying this new method to put a quilt together and I thought I would take a video because it seems like it could be amusing. My companion to now has been an audiobook. I think it's book three of the Daisy Dalrymple series. Um, I just got the COVID booster yesterday and it knocked me out last night and by which I mean actually it made me feverish and achy all over and then I couldn't sleep. This is the reverse of being knocked out in that sense. Um, so I took today off to rest and let my body fight its epic fight against this shot. Anyway, so step one of this method of quiltening is to roll your three different layers of quilt stuff onto something. So I used, uh, popular is pool noodles. I used foam pipe insulation because I couldn't find, I don't even know where to get pool noodles. And when I looked online, like for shops that might have them, they were surprisingly expensive. And this foam insulation was pretty cheap. So, um, it's cluttered in here because I just prepped everything. But here we are. So this foam insulation piece has the backing. The wrong way around. I think it'll still work. <laughs> Maybe we'll roll it on there again. We'll roll it on there again. Because the backing needs to go the wrong side, right side down. That's okay, because then you can see how it goes. This is the batting. I just bought it. It's white. I was going to use batting I had, but it's cream. And also, I ha the batting I had was, like, so much larger than I needed. Um... So I, it felt like it was going to be wasteful. And then I counted how many quilts I have to make and how much batting I had. And I had extra. Um, no. I, I had one quilt top more than I had batting. Although what I'm realizing in hindsight is that one of my other quilts that I have the batting for. I have cream colored, natural, it's undyed, undyed, unbleached batting. But that quilt also has predominantly white. Well, that's not true, but it does have a lot of white. And so that might not be the best choice. So here we are. So, there we go. We're gonna I don't even have a single table big enough. I thought about trying to do this at work, but uh, that's uh, slightly awkward and weird. So I'm gonna um, hem the fabric to the foam. I don't know how, I haven't done this before, so I don't know how, like, good you need to do this. Um, like, if this were a long arm machine, I know you kind of, like, have to stretch it. So, like, maybe that doesn't matter. How do I know until I do it and it fails or succeeds alternately? 
Why do I have to assume failure? Okay, there we are. So I'll pin and to make sure that it's snug, you know, and that there's no pleats or ripples or, I don't know, weirdness. I actually am slightly annoyed with myself because this backing, the white parts of it are more of a cream which doesn't match the front, but like you don't usually look at the back and the front at the same time. So I need to get over myself. So anyway, this is on here now. And everything's great. I'm gonna unroll a bit. And then my batting layer is gonna go I'm very glad that I did this the right way, it seems. Come on. Take out these pins. I'm gonna say one of the most satisfying parts of this process has been to pin the stuff to the rolls. I don't know why, but it's super satisfying to just like jab the pin in there. So now the batting should go on right side up. And there is a right and wrong side to batting. So come on now. Cool. I feel like this is a little bit cattywampus. I think you could do this on a wall to great advantage. Like put like dowels on the wall or something. See like that, that's bad. Why? Let's keep it up. Part of me wishes I had gotten four of these little um, foam things so that I could actually roll it onto, roll the, the back and the batting onto a thing, you know? Doesn't make sense, but it makes sense to me. Cheers. I have some kind of weird icon. Hope that's, hope that's not famous last words. And now we can put the top on here. And you can see that, well maybe you can't see, I can see that the, I cut the batting and the backing layers a considerable amount larger than the quilt top. So 
going to scooch you up a little. Do that. Now we can start basting. And I'm going to uh, dark there. I'm going to use this long basting needle and basting thread. It's actually used for clothes because um, the nice thing about this thread is it breaks easily. What's going on outside? You're going to sit over there. Oh, they're taking out the trash. Might switch them bowls. Maybe I should just add another one. Um, I could use pens, but I've run out of pens before and there's thing I kind of like about thread basting. I don't know why. I liked thread basting when I had to baste on the carpet. As long as I didn't sew to the carpet. I suppose pinning would be faster. But it's not bad to do little bit of thread basting in the end, she says, convincing herself. Now, unless I'm mistaken, ow. This is actually rolled up such that the height of the um, like the longest edge is the edge fastened to the not gold wiggle. No, no. 
Right on. Let's bring you closer. And then you can see the stitching, maybe. Oh, we gotta roll. Let me put you back. Gotta roll. Won't be this again for a little while. So we will open and roll. And I wanna. Yeah, a fourth one would have been good to roll this on to also. But we're gonna not worry about that. We're gonna use what we have. We are gonna worry that this is all crooked. A little. But. Not. Say hello to my stomach. Um, so this is where I last stitched. I'll go to here. I guess part of the reason I like this is you're not having to open and close any freaking safety pins. And also when you quilt, you don't even have to remove your stitching ahead of time. You can um, just quilt over this and pull it out later. Is here. One more, maybe. I do make one little back stitch when I reach the end of the thread because I can. I think it might behoove me to cut this thread though because it makes threading the needle easier. It's warm in here, maybe. I'm partly wondering if I'm having hot flashes. I'm partly wondering if I'm Still a little fevered. I hope you enjoy this video or whatever. I'm enjoying it. Let's try to move the camera. Should we try and do artsy shots where I'm like coming right for you with thread and needle? Nope, it doesn't work. Maybe it'll work if I do that. Okay, I gotta be honest, it, it feels really weird to my ears that I said thread and needle and not needle and thread. Did that feel weird to your ears too? There are rules, unspoken and usually unwritten rules, about the order in which we can say certain things in English and have it not sound weird. So example is say to yourself, if you say, the skinny short girl, ooh, that's weird. But the short skinny girl...
sounds normal. If you say the skinny short girl, you are picturing that there's a room full of short girls and you're trying to describe one of them, the skinny one, right? Oh, my phone is like, look, B, you need to acknowledge what about the non-short girls? What about the non-skinny girls? I get you, I get you. No judgment. Ooh. Ooh. I have been filming a lot of, I almost said ink bent, what? 30 ink, 30 day videos um, and enjoying that process. I have been doing a lot of writing to do my transcribing and ooh, a lot of hunching over and have had a lot of pain in my lower back down here. So I've been trying to like take breaks to stretch. I read like push your chest towards the ceiling. But let's face it, I have a lot of hobbies that involve me hunching over. I went through one of the seam allowances. It's thick. Thick. This pattern for this quilt is called Whirly Gig. It's by Quilt Ethics Anonymous. And it was part of the Stash and with Stephanie Club. And I liked it so much that I bought the finishing kit so that I could make it. I've done that with two of the kits I got, or two of the subscription months. Um, and then what I'm gonna do with some, I think, is I gotta dig out my book on, um, I have a book that I bought many years ago of like, so many different quilt squares to make and I read advice once that said that if you want to like get more into like get more practice blah 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 that if you just buy a bunch of fabric like fat quarters or whatever from the same line even if you make samples you can um, assemble them all into a cohesive quilt if they're all made from the same sort of fabric. So, I thought about doing that with some of that. Because ultimately, I have kind of a lot of fabric. This is mostly quilting fabric. This is all tulip pink. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Love tulip pink. Um, how long have we been filming? Let's film a little longer. Sit you down here. bought this thread. Where did I get it? I don't remember. But it's the kind of thread you would use for tailor's tacks. For thread marking, for basting. For clothes. And wherever I bought it, I don't know if you can see how big this spool is, but it came with two of them because you just use it liberally. I wonder if 
what I should do or could do is pin and then go back and so wait this really doesn't work right. Where are you? Needle threader. Super dope. You put the needle in here and the thread there and then you push this and a little piece of metal comes and shoves the thread through the needle. It's great. Okay. So I think I guess I'm basting every row. That feels kind of excessive. And whatever. Oops. It feels really wrong to cut such long pieces of thread. Never want to do that for hand sewing. Gotta be careful not to stab myself. Too much white fabric. Can't bleed on it. It'd be fine otherwise. <laughs> I don't know yet how I'm going to quilt this. I figured straight lines. But wave it could be good too. I don't know what I'm going to do in this quilt when it's done. I have this idea of bringing it to my sister's, which is why I'm kind of doing this now. I have three more quilt tops finished, maybe four. I don't know if one of them is done, that's why I say maybe, because I started it years ago, 
And I had like visions for the front that were not fully formed. And I just thought, well, I'll wing it. And I no longer think that those visions were going to be very good. But I do have what I thought was going to be just a back that could really be a quilt. So. thing about quilts is they're good layering pieces if you need more than one piece of bedding. And even here in California, I need that. So So you can put it down. I use it just a quilt on my bed when it is too hot to have my down comforter. And in the winter when it's really cold, I put it over my down comforter. Because why not? Now, have good ergonomics. Pull this towards me a little. This, oops, this needle, ow, is so curved. Oh, oh no, no blood, no blood. I did this to baste a quilt once because I ran out of pens while basting with pens. Um, and except for the part where I was like crawling on the ground on hands and knees to do it, I liked it. So I thought it would only be improved by being able to do it on a table. But I do wonder, in ye olden times, how did they get their quilts together? They didn't have big old houses, like their rooms were smaller. Did they just not care? If they turned out quote unquote perfect? Did they maybe make use of churches? That just occurred to me. It seems like it could happen. Barns? I'm sure the table underneath here is getting nice and marked up. So it will have a history. you know about how in the olden days they managed this leave a message
movement. Let's take a look and see how we've done. Let me tell you, it took a long time to go on the back of this and cut all of the little threads because they'll show through since the background is white. So, can we see the stitching? Maybe. And on the backing, yeah, you can see the basting. Pretty excited. Now I just need to do the rest of this quilt. I'm sure it'll take no time at all. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me. I will, um, maybe I'll make another video showing the quilting of this. No promises though. <laughs>